Rather than stress out about resolutions and changes and growth and explosion and making 2022 the best year yet, how about you think about joy? How can you spend this month infusing joy into everything that you do? Because why not? Why start off a year restricting? Instead, start off a year feeling joy. Hey you, yes you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week, I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? week's episode is sponsored by my very own 90 day challenge. It is the kind of challenge that helps you start 2022 off with clear purpose, accountability, an actionable to-do list, and weekly fun challenges that push you closer to your goals, but also bring you joy in life. And you completely deserve that. In the challenge, we work together for the first three months of 2022 to help figure out what just happened in the year before that you lived, create 90-day milestones and game plans, and allow you to figure out really small steps to start working to achieve those goals and habits. Plus, there's one-on-one coaching, there's weekly feedback, there's access to workshops that you can watch on demand during the 90 days, there's group coaching, virtual hangouts, email support. It feels like you have your cheerleaders leader, best friend by your side during the 90 days for some good intentional life strategy. And if you're busy during the first 90 days of the year, that's okay. This is the kind of challenge that fits into your life and not the other way around. At most, you'll spend 30 to 45 minutes a week on this challenge, which isn't much time, but will really make you have so many incredible results. And the cool part about this is more than 87% of people who signed up again for this challenge were already challenged participants last year, which is super cool. The cost of the challenge is just $3 a day, which is nothing. That's less than a coffee. And for that price, to start your new year off in a way that's not stressful, that doesn't give you anxiety, but instead really considers who you are, what you want, and how to get there, that $3 a day will breed lifetime value for you. Hope to see you there, jenglance.com slash 90, jenglance.com slash 90. The challenge starts on Monday. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glance, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. How you doing? We're in January. There's so much pressure attached to this month that I just wish it would stop. I feel like every email that's being sent out, every person I meet wishes me a happy new year, asks me how I feel about the new year, asks me if I'm excited about the new year. And the truth is, I'm not excited about a new year. I mean, this podcast is called You're Not Getting Any Younger, and a new year just reminds us of that in the most really in your face kind of way. And it's not that I'm excited for a new year. I'm not the kind of person that believes just because it's a new year, it'll be a better year. But am I eager for a new year? Yes, of course, because I'm eager to reset the calendar and I'm eager to live life from January forward. You know, once you get in the middle of a year, habits settle in, you you find it even harder to change and you find yourself stuck. So I do love this intention, this emotion of a fresh year. But with that, of course, comes so much pressure to know who you are and what you want and how you're going to make things so different. And I'll start off by saying I am so freaking guilty with this. At the end of 2020, my friend sent me this booklet that was all about reviewing your year, setting intentions, setting goals. And I was so eager to do it. I had really never done anything like that before. So I did it. It was a game changer because it really helped me structure my year. And it's what I based my 90 day challenge off of. But what bugged me the most was every single time I asked Adam to sit down and do it and to review it with me, 
he didn't the plans fell through and he just didn't do it and that made me feel like he started his year off just a bit weird and because of that it stressed me out immensely throughout the year it was like this big lingering fight I had with him just how I was so disappointed that he didn't take all the steps I did at the end of 2020 to plan for 2021 so as the, this year came to an end I made sure I did everything I could to get him to take inventory, to get him to look back at his year, to get him to set intentions for the new year. And I did it in a very stressful kind of way, as if it bothered me, as if it ruined how I processed a year if we both didn't hold hands and march into a new year together with all of these grand plans. And I think the truth is that everyone is trying to put pressure on you during this time of year for so many reasons. And you're even putting so much pressure on yourself without even realizing it. And this is the time of year to strip away all of that pressure. I like to view the month of January as the month I ease into a brand new year, as a month I figure things out, as a month I try things on as if I was shopping for new clothes or try new habits as if I was seeing if they actually stuck for me and meant something for me. It's a month where I just test things out. A lot of people enter a new year with resolutions that are quite generic that don't actually fit into their lives. Like so many people are like, it's a new year. I'm going to journal every day. I'm going to meditate every night. But they've never done either of those things before. And just because they see other people doing it, they suddenly think that they need to do that too to have a healthy and enriched life. And maybe that's the truth, but also maybe it's not the truth for you. So spending this month not really making any huge grand plans or any big changes, but just thinking and approaching things with this try on mentality is the best way to get through a month where everybody is putting pressure on you and you are putting pressure on you too. And you might be thinking, Jen, you are the person who is running this 90 day challenge. You're asking us to join this 90 day challenge. And the truth is yes, because the 90 day challenge is absolutely not an in your face, aggressive way of starting the year. It's everything I'm talking to you about right now. So I know that I am such a big promoter of starting the year off strong, but I really believe in doing that in a way where the month of January is practice, is a warm up, is still processing all of the things that you just experienced the past year. And maybe for a lot of us because of this pandemic, the year before that as well. We carry what happens throughout a year around with us like it's baggage, like it's something that we can't just store and never see again. So that's why I really believe in processing. But today I want to talk about how to ease into the new year. And these are some things that I just really believe in. Number one is to, again, ease into it all. As you come back to work, as you start to see friends again, as people start to add things to your calendar, set boundaries for yourself. Make sure that if it starts to feel super overwhelming, that you take breaks, that you say no, that you push things off for future months. May January be the least busy month of your year. Even though for so many of us, it's the month that we book the gym membership and the month that we try to see a new friend once a week and the month that we plan three date nights a month and the month that we try to do all of these things. But let this be your easiest month. Let it even be your most boring month. Because if you do that right, your other months will feel intentional and will allow your boundaries to stick. Rather than set resolutions, rather than set these promises to yourself that you're going to lose this or gain this or change this or have this, set intentions. And the word intention is quite a cool thing because it's almost like you're sticking one foot into that pool, but you also have the ability to take your other foot and keep it out. And what I mean by that is, again, Setting intentions of things that you want to try, that you want to do, that you want to change, that you want to become, but also knowing that as you approach those intentions, if all of a sudden it doesn't feel right or doesn't feel like it's right for you, it's okay to change. It's okay to get out of the pool and run away and go into a sauna and dry yourself off. If your intention is to switch careers and do something completely different and you go down that path and realize, hey, it's not for you. You don't have to keep pursuing that. You can do something different. But when we think of resolutions and goals, we think of finish lines. But those finish lines often are pushed or changed or all of a sudden they become invisible or they evaporate and that's okay. So maybe you want to live healthier. Your intention is to be healthier. 
but you by no means have this strict goal of working out five times a week and not having carbs unless it's Sunday. You know, those are things that are restrictions and restrictions work against intentions because they change how you feel and who you are. So what are the intentions that you want to try out this month? Start there. Before you plan your intentions for the year, start with January. Also, build in some thinking time this month. As you start to reflect and write down and maybe even take inventory on the past year, start to think really deeply and truly and honestly and vulnerably about the things that you want that might be really, really hard to admit or the things that you care about that you've stopped caring about for so long or the things you've been putting off that you really want to do or that person who you know you can become and you want to become. Start to think about the scary things. The really, 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 really scary things that you often spend years of your life not thinking about. And just because you're thinking about them again doesn't mean you have to take action. But this is a great month to think through the scary things that if we start to think about time not being on our side are things we care about and things we want to do. Also, this month, forgive yourself. If you're trying to be healthier and all of a sudden on a Thursday you have a donut for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert, forgive yourself. Don't restrict yourself. Forgive yourself. This is a month of forgiveness, of trying and seeing things not working out or trying to fix new habits and realizing that you need to take a couple steps back before you really fix that habit. Forgive yourself for forgetting to call your friends this month if that was a huge goal of yours and forgive yourself for not being able to clear your inbox by the end of Monday. Forgive yourself. The more you can treat yourself very nicely during a time of year like this right now, the better you will feel and be as you continue to push forward throughout this year. I read something the other day when I was doing some research on how to ease into the new year without being completely stressed out or overwhelmed. And I found this quote in a Fast Company article that said, instead of making resolutions, instill joy into everything you do. So yeah, maybe you want to be healthier, but how can you do it in a way that brings you joy? And maybe you want to be a better partner or friend, but how can you do that in a way that instills joy? And maybe you want a new job, a new career. You want to live somewhere different. You want to be a completely different version of yourself this year. Okay, how can you do it in a way that brings joy? Now, I leave you with that because that is some real interesting stuff to think about, my friend. But perhaps that word joy is the word of the month. How can you try things and see what brings you joy? Because you deserve to have joy in your life, even as you're doing and changing and growing and becoming all of the things you deserve as well. As always, cheering you on. All my love, Jen Glantz. And by the way, I hope to see you as part of the 90 day challenge. Again, it is completely not in your face, aggressive, rah, rah bullshit. It is an actionable, inspiring, insightful, thoughtful, and strategic way to approach the start of the new year. More than 80% of people who did the challenges in 2021 are back again for the challenge this year. Check it out, jenglance.com slash 90. That's jenglance.com slash 90. I'll see you next week. All my love, Jen Glance. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.